Recording in progress. Thank you. Um, whenever we hit Pasha's Kisetze, so I know that um, the, the end is near, meaning that, that it always, uh, Pasha's Kisetze, it's telling me that we're getting close to, to Rosh Hashanah. We have one more, one more regular Pasha, so to speak, and that's the Pasha of Kisava, which is next week. Um, next week's Pasha, where we have all the curses, and then um, we get into the Pashios, the direct preparations for um, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, which is Pashas Nitzavim, Vayelech. This year they're split, Nitzavim comes before, and Vayelech is in um, the Aserish Mechuva, which is not usually that way. Um, but nevertheless, the, this, is, this is nearing towards the end. It's almost at the, like the height of Sefer Dvarim. And we find in this parasha the most mitzvahs in any parasha. I mean, it's just it's it's chock full of mitzvahs, and it's like the greatest hits. There's there's incredible things that are spoken about in the parasha that we are familiar with that Moshe Rabbeinu was um, reorienting us to and teaching us new things in order to be able to prepare us. This was towards the end of his speech, toward the end of his life, and almost that we were about to go into the land of Israel. He was preparing this new generation to go into the land. So he teaches us something amongst the important, incredible things he teaches us. He teaches us something which is much deeper than the verses of the of the Torah. He teaches us as follows: a simple, I mean, halacha. I shouldn't say simple. It's a halacha, and it is a halacha in the time of the temple when we have a Sanhedrin, and the Torah says, chapter twenty-five, verse one: "Ki ye a riv ben anoshim." I'll just read the section. The section will be that important when I when I go past it. So I'll just read it. Ki ye a riv ben anoshim v'nikshu. When there is a, a fight between people, meaning that they have some kind of um, legal disagreement, and they go to the judge, the one who is innocent is going to be made innocent, and the one who is wicked is going to be made wicked. The Talmud has a whole way of understanding those psukim. If the person is um, found guilty of doing something, so then he gets lashes. Now, it turns out, when the Talmud talks about this, the Talmud says that he committed a negative commandment, which I'll talk about in a moment. But he said he committed, this person committed a negative commandment, and if he requires lashes, which is the punishment for a negative commandment, so then the, 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 he puts him down in front of him, and he gives him kidei rishaso, in accordance with his wickedness, but mispar in a number. So in other words, he's going to give him lashes based on a number. What number? Arboyim yakenu velo Yosef. The maximum number of lashes a person can receive, according to the Torah, without any interpretation, is arboyim yakenu, that he gets 40 lashes, and um, no, nothing more, lo Yosef. You can't go beyond 40. Pen Yosef la koso, lest you, are, lest you give him more, al ela makaraba, no, you, 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 don't, you don't stop. You go 40, 50, 60, and v'nik l'achichal anecha. It's not going to be good for him. Um, he is going to be, um, it's going to be embarrassing for him because the longer you take to give these lashes, the more lashes that you give him, so then the more he is degraded. He only needs a certain measure of degradation in order to be able to be cleansed from the transgression that he does. And this is going to be overboard. Also, there's a possibility of killing him, which is a whole other issue. And then, so we're taught the mitzvah of lashes. We're taught the, taught the mitzvah of giving 40 lashes, our boyim yakenu, giving 40 lashes to somebody who commits a negative commandment in the Torah. And then the Torah says, at the end of this section, and we know when we call a section of the Torah, we call it a parsha. We tend to call parshios by the, the weekly parsha, right? The portion of the week. But, a, but that's not really, the, the Torah is made up of a series of parshios. Every time you see a space in the Torah, so then, or a paragraph change in the art scroll, right? So then it is a, that is a section of the Torah. So this section, is one section, ends with the following law. Lo sachsom shor bedishay. When you are in the field and you're plowing with your ox, don't muzzle your ox so that it should not be able to eat from the ground. The, the vegetation that you're working on, he has the rights to be able to eat it. Lo sachsom shor bedisho. Now, what does that have to do with lashes? The Torah sectionizes things. In other words, everything is in the place that it needs to be. It needs to be in the section. What in the world does this commandment, this commandment belongs with agricultural commandments. This commandment belongs with stealing commandments. It belongs with, with commandments to animals. 
But why does this commandment belong here with the concept of, of, of giving lashes? The simple understanding of the Talmud is, is that this becomes the paradigm. What the Torah is telling us is, is that when do you give lashes? When you've committed a negative transgression, like like don't muzzle your animal. It has to be an action. There has to be certain conditions in place. And when those conditions are in place, so then the default punishment of transgressing a negative commandment, a negative commandment is a commandment that says, do not do this. Thou shalt not do. That's a negative commandment. Thou shalt not say is a negative commandment that doesn't have speech. Thou shalt not do this. That is a negative commandment. Sheyesh bay maisa that has an action that is not connected to a positive commandment that would clean it up. If you do this, then do that and make it better. It's just a standalone negative commandment. And for a standalone negative commandment, you are obligated in 40 lashes to receive 40 lashes. Shkaych. I now explained beautifully a section of the Torah. I could speak for another hour just explaining the basic, but I'm giving you the very, very, very basic. This is the commandment of lashes and and telling us when we get lashes. We get lashes when we commit a negative transgression. Happy birthday. Doesn't that help you? Now you know. What are you going to get? 40 lashes when you commit a negative transgression. Well, no, you're not because there's no temple. So what does this do for me, this section? Is this only a legal thing? Is this only something that's going, to, that's going to mean anything if there's a temple? And if there's no temple, then it simply means nothing. It can't be. Because it's in the Torah. It's given to us. It's given to us as a direction and an instruction, which means that there's something that I have to be learning from this section of the Torah, even though I can't administer these lashes. And I'm going to show you something so stunning and amazing. So the Medr says that why does the Torah command 40 lashes? Is lefisha over ala Torah shenosna lemem yoim. Because we have transgressed a commandment in the Torah. The Torah was given on for the 40th day after the, it was given, it was given lemem yom, 40 days after Moshe Rabbeinu went up to the mountain and he brought down the Torah. <clears throat> and th- then therefore, that's why the number 40 was chosen, because it corresponds to the fact that you have transgressed that 40-day gestated Torah. Okay, second reason, says the Medrash, that the reason why it's 40 lashes, because you were gara misa la'atzma, because you caused death to yourself, yom. you, the beautiful human being, your your creation was 40 days after conception. 40 days after conception, that's when you began to grow. And you have taken that growth, you have taken that seed, you've taken that basis of yourself, and you've sullied it. So you've taken that 40, and you have, you have turned it around. And therefore, you get 40 lashes. Yilka abarim v'yetzi nasho, oncho. You'll get your 40 lashes, and yetzi oncho, you will you, you will leave your others, you'll leave your sin behind. That's beautiful. And therefore, that's why we have the number 40. We also know that the final trip of Moshe, when Moshe went up to get to, to, to get God to forgive the Jewish people because of the golden calf, Moshe Rabbeinu went up on the first of Elul and he came down with a new set of Torah on Yom Kippur. And that 40-day trip from the first of Elul until Yom Kippur, that was Moshe's trip to get the, to, to redo the transgression of the golden calf. And by going against the Torah, we sort of re, re, reawaken that sin of the golden calf. The number 40 is just, it's replete with connections. And therefore, the Torah tells us that we get 40 lashes. Beautiful. There's only one small problem. And the small problem is you don't get 40 lashes. The maximum number that you get is 39. It's called 39 lashes. It's not called 40 lashes. Torah calls it. I buy him Yakanu, give him 40. But it's 39 minus 1. 
You know, I don't know if you ever remember as a child playing the game Snatch the Bottle. And they would take a, a bottle and put it in between, or some object, put it in between two lines of people. And everybody would have a number. And then they would call out a number. And then you would have to run and pick, the, pick out the thing without being tagged by the person who had the corresponding number. They, they would call out like one in ten. Right or and the person or they would call it ten and there were two tens one on each side and then the person with the corresponding number would would try to tag the person who grabbed it great, but a lot of times when they got fancy with it what they would do instead of saying the number ten they would say seven plus three so you had to do math now knock on top of it so so besides you had to be quick you had to be able to do math the Torah why not just say thirty nine lashes say what you mean man why are you saying 40 lashes. Oh, no, the 40 doesn't really mean 40. It's so Jewish. The 40 doesn't really mean this. The opposite means this. It's 39 lashes. If it's supposed to be 40 lashes, then it's supposed to be 40 lashes. The Gemara asks, Kama Malkin, I say, how many lashes do we give? Our boy, Mechosar Achas. Oh, it's 40 minus one. Shinamar, as it says in the Torah, when I read you the verses, we read the word Bamispar, which... Again, if I, had, if I had two hours to unfold this, I would do it. But the word bemispar in a number means that the way that it's juxtaposed in the Pasuk, which is really from the previous verse, we learn it and understand that it means that it's to a number, to the number 40, not 40, but to the number 40. Rashi explains it this way. That's the, that's the way we understand what the Talmud is teaching us, that it means that, for, that you should give him 40 bemispar arboyim. That means up to the number 40. And what's up to the number 40 is 39. The Torah was telling that all the time telling us that all the time okay but so then why did the torah choose 40 because the torah needed 40 to allude to the 40 days of creation to the to the whole 40 thing but if that's the case then why is it 39 what's with the difference between 39 and 40 so the maral says in his say for the gur arye he says why was the flood 40 days so we know because it would correspond to the 40 days of Yitzir Savlad, the 40 days of the creation of a human being. Because during the first 39 days after conception, there's the formation of the guf, and then on the 40th day, the neshama enters the guf. The neshama enters the body. See, very often we think that, you know, that, that things things start, the neshama comes when a, when a baby is born. This was a machlokas in, with, with, with uh, secular sages and Jewish sages. But at the end of the day, the, the neshama enters the body or hovers over the body at the 40th day of conception, which means as follows. When a person commits an Aveira, so then which part of you is committing that transgression? It's your guf that's committing that transgression. It's the body that commits the transgression. The, the neshama, which is a chelik alukom imal, which is a portion of God from above, it, it longs for spiritual gratification. It's connected to God. It's connected above. It does. It's not affected. It's not sullied. However, as long as the physical body was was affected, and was affected by the avera by the transgression, so then the neshama is also affected, because anything that's connected to tuma itself becomes tummy. Anything connected to impurity itself becomes impure. And that's why the Torah says, Arboim Yakenu. Arboim Yakenu is talking to the total human being, the guf and the neshama. It's talking to the body and to the soul. And that's why we use the number 40 in the Torah. But come along the rabbis and say, but practical? Practical, you only have to give 39. Because when you give 39, you've taken care of the guf You've taken care of the body and now the neshama is no longer suffering because the body has now taken it. The body's been cleansed through the lashes. The body's been purified and free of defilement and therefore the neshama is no longer sitting inside of a defiled body. And that's why you have the Torah says 40 but the rabbis say 30, the rabbis, the oral Torah says 39 because 40 is the number, the bemispar arboim. You have to know that number 40, because that number 40 corresponds to the creation of Avlad. It corresponds to the, to the body and the soul together. However, 
once you've given the 39, so then the neshama is no longer connected to a defiled body, practically you only have to give 39. But I want to take it one step further. Because the Chassam Seifer says something that is stunning. The Chassam Seifer brings up a Gemara in Brachos that says, Tova Mardus Achas Beliba Shal Adam that a single impulse of self-discipline that comes from the heart of a person is yoiser, is greater mikama malkios. It's greater than many lashes that a person could receive. When a person wakes his heart up, when a person looks at himself and in his heart he realizes that there's something amiss with me, there's something wrong that needs to be fixed. However many times he gets smacked from the outside, and not just in lashes, but in life. However many times he suffers in life, however many times he falls down in life, which generates him, which, in, which inspires him to think. But if that thinking and that motivation can come from the insides, that's considered even greater. We recognize that a Kodesh Baruch who gives us wake-up calls all the time. But if a person's own internal alarm can go off even before those external things happen, that's considered greater. Says the Chassam Sefer, what's the whole purpose of lashes? The whole purpose of lashes is to wake up the heart inside. This is not just a punitive thing. Oh, you committed that transgression? Take your shirt off. It's time to go. We're going to give you lashes because that's what you deserve now. That's not the purpose. The purpose of the lashes is not that he should stand there just as an example, which it helps, but just as an example to everybody else on the outside. The purpose of lashes is to awaken the heart of a person. That's how we just said that when you give the person 39 lashes, so then you've given the goof. Now the neshama is in a healthy place. The goof is sick. And the goof needs to, needs to be changed, needs to be fixed. When you fix that goof, when you give it its medicine, and its medicine is a jarring wake-up call, then the neshama is now going to be able to do its thing. The whole purpose of lashes is to get a person, to awaken a person, that a person should realize, should feel, a mardus acha, should feel that one moment, that one impulse of self-discipline, to wake up and to realize, how could I possibly have allowed myself to go against the will of Hashem? And then to discipline himself. That mardus achas, that one act of self-discipline, that one aha moment, that one epiphany, that's the tachlis. That's the purpose of all of those lashes. Our boim yakenu, that was the total number of lashes. The total number of lashes is 40. 39 lashes from Beisden, 39 lashes from the rabbinical court, and one lash from himself inside of his own of his own psyche inside of his own soul. When the Torah says, Arboim Yakenu, the Torah is saying, You, Arboim Yakenu, you give him 40 lashes so that he can give himself that ultimate lash. You give him 39. That's what the Talmud explains. That Bemispar Yakenu, you give him 39 so that he can give himself now the ultimate lash, that 40th lash. And that's the whole purpose. There is no contradiction between the written Torah and the oral Torah. The written Torah saying 40, the oral Torah telling us that it's 39, but it's teaching us a concept that what is all the stuff that we get smacked with? It's just to generate that 40th maka, the 40th lash that comes internally inside of a person. And even when we don't have the 39 on the outside, we still have that one, the Arboyim, the 40th one, we still have the ability to be able to generate it on the inside. And the Torah is telling us that this concept of lashes is an eternal concept. Whether there is a temple or whether there isn't a temple, it applies to our lives, that it applies to us to be able to give ourselves that Arboyim, to be able to give ourselves that 40th lash. The 39, 
that's not with us anymore. But the Arboyim Yakenu, that 40th lash, that we still have the ability to give ourselves. I don't know how many people noticed, but during the Scud War, decades ago, do you know how many Scud missiles there were? 39. 39 Scud missiles shot into Eretz Yisrael. So there were many people that took it, ran with it in a negative way. It's because of Shabbos. Shabbos is 39 Malachos. And they took the number 39 and connected it to a lot of things. But I think it's Pashat. Arboim Yakenu. 39. Arboim minus, Arboim Chaser Achas. 40 minus 1. 39. That comes from the outside. But the whole purpose of that was for only one reason. Nobody died. One person had a heart attack. But nobody died during that war because it wasn't to kill anybody. It was to wake up our boy in Yakenu to give us that 40th lash, that makas mardus belibo shal adam, to awaken the heart of a person. This parasha always comes before Rosh Hashanah, comes during the month of Elul, this parish is here to teach us about this concept of makos, this concept of how we deal with things on the outside. Those are makos. Those are hits. But the purpose of those makos is our boim yakenu. It's for the 40th one. Talmud tells us 39. That's what we give him outside. But to get to that 40th, to get to that one that comes motivated from internal, motivated from the depths of a person, and that one will have much more of a positive effect on a person than everything they receive on the outside. Halavai. We should be able to generate that one internal maka, to be able to hit ourselves, to be able to look at ourselves and to assess ourselves and to see it without any of the stuff that comes on the outside. Because if we could do that, so then we could really affect ourselves. We could really upgrade ourselves and uplift ourselves. Slichas, Shoifer during Elul, all of those things, they're meant to wake up, to make a sound on the outside so that we could generate that one maka that one motivation, that one impulse inside of self-discipline. And with that, we can change our world. Okay. My thoughts. Just going to blow Schaefer. Yeah. Everybody should have a beautiful, wonderful, amazing day and a beautiful, wonderful, amazing Shabbos. And Mirza Shem, we'll see everybody on Sunday. Thank you so much, Rabbi. Thank, Thank you, Rabbi. You. Good Shabbos, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Have a great Shabbat, everyone. Shabbat shalom. Bye.